Hello uh, and welcome to the last session uh, here in this room for today. I'm just here uh, as uh, a moderator and uh, welcome to the session uh, working as a foreigner in Germany. And I will hand over this microphone uh, to my colleague uh, Jacobo. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, it's working? Okay. 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 I'm from Costa Rica. I came here one year ago. It uh, was easy and hard because finding a job in Germany, I found this this job in Dortmund. Via I was online like looking for jobs. And it was surprisingly easy to find something related to, for me, I am UX designer, web designer. And yeah, I did some interviews via Skype. And yeah, it was, was very fine, very, very, very nice. So the time I've been here is, yeah, it's, it's a cultural shock in a good way. Because, you know, Germans are very organized. And I like that because it's very easy to work. Before I've been working with people from the United States, in Costa Rica, Mexico. And you can see the difference with Germans. Because it's, it's like they don't rush. They, they have more time to, yeah, to relax. But at the same time, so they are organized so they can, they can get things done, right? So, yeah, I, I'm happy here. I live in Dortmund, very nice city. And for me, it's, it, it's, it's hard. The language, the language I'm learning. Yeah, I'm lear I can understand. Christoph is my teacher. It's like every day we have a, like a little pig bank, piggy bank. Piggy bank. Yeah. Every time I spoke, I spoke in English or Spanish, I have to. <laughs> 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 so it's the same, same for us too. Yeah, it's the same for them. So in a good way, yeah, it's, it's very nice because I'm learning. I can understand. I I can speak just English, but yeah, I'm very happy here. Um, my name is Maria Aragon. I come from Colombia. I came to Germany 10 years ago. Uh, initially, just for two years, I was going to finish my master degree and then go back because my whole family is there. But then a job opportunity presented, so I stayed another year. Then I was ready to go back. Then I met the person who is now my husband, who is German. So now that was seven years ago and uh, I, I stayed. I stayed, but I also stayed uh, because it is a nice country to live in. It has a lot of advantages, but it was an adjustment and it had changed me. It has changed me, um, I don't know, a couple of first points to say uh, when I came here, one comes with the, with the thought or the impression that Germans are cold and serious and, and very um, distant. Um, but then you get to know them and they are really nice and helpful and friendly and uh, yes, they can be very direct and that was also an adjustment. <laughs> but then y I learned also to appreciate how good that is, how good that is that Germans are direct. They tell you what it is that they need. I had my first boss, we were mm, communicating a lot in, in Skype, through Skype and every time I needed something from him, um, hello, how are you today? Uh, I would, for me, it was very important to be polite and to start a conversation like that. Um, it didn't last two or three days until he said, hey, stop that. If you want something <laughs> for me, if you, like, if there's a Skype pop-up that distracts me, it's already kicking me out, do not say, how are you? I, yeah, tell me what you want. And then... <laughs> For me, it was impolite. It felt very rude to say, hello, Ulrich, can you please give me the page for this and that? That's, in, in our point of view, very rude. But then I understood how much time we lose <laughs> if we do it the other way around. Or uh, same, when I was at my first customer, I was um, staying there for the whole day. And then 
when you go up to the cafeteria and then you see people in the stairs or in the hall, hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Then I would have to call them for something. Hello, how are you? Maria, you already asked me that today. Why are you asking me again how I am? I already told you. Same thing. Um, we always say, hey, how are you? Hey, how are It doesn't matter. It's like standard. Um, but thi this directness, I understand. And how is it that they can be so effective and so um, productive? It's, it has changed me, but, but in, in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> So hi, my name is Carlos. I come from Chile, Latin America. I lived here in Germany yeah, nine years ago. So nine years live here. And I think for, for me it's, it's, it's the same like, like you, this uh, directly uh, point of view of Germans. Because for example, uh, for me was in the, wha when I, write a, I wrote an a email, then the people here in Germany say, okay, uh, Folgen, this this is a follow, and pa 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 ready, and and we we I think the people in Latin America they make unders a different a different way. We ask how are you, how is your family, and blah, and, blah, and then we go to the point, <laughs> because because otherwise it's not too um, po political. So so Polite. yeah Polite. yes. And I think this is a, a point that for me was so a, a, a very big difference here in, in Germany. Yeah, my, uh, my name is uh, Walter. I'm from, uh, from the Netherlands. My mom is from Indonesia and my dad is from the Czech, what's now the Czech Republic. And uh, I've been living in Germany for 10 years. And for me, the experience is a little bit different. For me, Germans are very polite compared to the Dutch. Yeah. So that's it's quite different. Um, I expected that everything would be really formal, but that is not really the case. You have some instances where they are formal, but if you work with colleagues, it's not that different compared to the Netherlands. Um, the first question uh, colleagues usually ask, "Zi or I do?" <laughs> it's only the, the, the chefs or uh, people higher up uh, you you see. So that's for me a bit different uh, perspective, um, but uh, still the differences are uh, compared to uh, like uh, Dutch and German are not that big, but uh, there's nuances uh, that are different. And also the, the, the language, uh, for me, it's very confusing sometimes because there are a lot of words in Dutch. They also exist in German, but they have a different meaning. So for I confuse example, them. <laughs> Ask and help. Uh, if, uh, familia. Uh, familia. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, familia is. Uh, yeah, in, uh, the, the, the in, in German, that's like mom, dad, children. Uh, fa family in Dutch is all the relatives. Also, all the the cousins okay. and yeah. Uh, okay. How do you call mom, dad, brother, and sister? Cousin. Completely the ones. Okay. okay. And also, uh, for example, uh, uh, rente. Yeah. That's like uh, uh, pension, but in Dutch that is interest. So sometimes I confuse okay. words because yeah, I know them Dutch. And I, oh no, it has a different meaning and. Sometimes it just happens that people look at me like, huh, what, what do you mean? <laughs> False friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's because um, the, the languages are so close, that's a yeah. different problem. Um, I, th I think maybe it's, it's me who repeats my question. Or ah, okay. um, 
one question uh, is, I, I know from uh, media that, uh, especially for, uh, for other people, um, sometimes it's hard uh, to get their um, 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 so, uh, to, to, uh, to they have their uh, education accepted uh, in Germany. Did you have anything that, uh, like that? Uh, so uh, did any one of you have uh, the issue that uh, what they learned wasn't accepted or whatever? <coughs> I can answer this question. Um, yeah, I learned uh, study here in Germany and uh, we have the, the people in Latin America we have um, uh, adventure here in, in Europe because in Spain the people speak Spanish and we don't have to translate our documents of, of the, the student and this is because uh, for us it's not too difficult to, to um, co convalidate the, the student for example for me I, 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 I didn't have problem for, for that I, I don't know um, on the official validation like to be accepted as I was a bachelor already and I was accepted as a bachelor here as well. What was a problem for me was more like understanding the German education system. Um, when I was applying, I didn't know any German uh, and I wanted to study a master's degree. So I was looking for German universities. So if you find an university of applied sciences, well, it's a university. And I applied to a University of Applied Sciences because it sounded, well, applied. I'm an engineer. It's good. Applied. Then to later find out that a Fachhochschule, something completely different from uh, a, a university, university, that it's a different level and you need like different grades and different ty types and different recognition. Had I known that before, I probably wouldn't have applied to a Fachhochschule. But you, I don't know if it is, is that a European thing? I think it's a German thing. Is it similar in the Netherlands? In the Netherlands is uh, the same system. You have Fachhochschule, Hochschule, and University. And again, that's one of the things that when you understand, oh, it makes sense. Yeah, because the system and then they distribute, it makes sense. But at the beginning, I'm like, how is it that you decide when you're in like a 10 year old kid, whether you or not you're going to make it to university or not? It's, it was a little bit, an I, I know that it's not like that. It's not black or white, that there are different ways, but, but it was, I, I like in, in Colombia, yes, you decide, but you're already 18 when you decide. So it's a little bit more, it's not so early that you're, Technically, you decide uh, if you go to university or to Fachhochschule uh, when you're uh, something like uh, 17 or 18, when you do either uh, the Abitur or just the Fachabitur. So um, is there any funny story uh, that you can uh, tell, like uh, uh, that you um, misunderstood words, uh, signs, or whatever. Any funny story that uh, you came uh, into? Yeah, there was one German uh, word that I didn't know. Uh, well, my boss asked me, I was talking to a client, and so, wie seid ihr verblieben? Und ich verblieben, ja, ich bin doch hier. I'm here. So, <laughs> verblieben is to stay somewhere. Let's say, no, uh, no, that's so they, they had to laugh and like uh, I had to explain what it was. So, uh, one of my favorite breads, like here in Germany, the bakers are amazing, right? And one time I, 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 I ordered, uh, is called in German Knusperkönchen or something like that, right? Knusperkönchen, <laughs> yeah. Entschuldigung. <laughs> So, but for me, it was too hard to pronounce that word. <laughs> but I, I loved that, but I didn't know where, where the bread was. And every morning I was like, hmm, where is that? I w really wanted that bread for breakfast. And the girl was, what? What? I'm croissant, bitch. <laughs> I'm croissant. Forgot the word. <laughs> That's the thing with my German. I 
<laughs> Just to share the fun with other others, can you say riecht? <laughs> riecht. <laughs> Good? No. no. <laughs> Excuse me. Try again. Riecht. <laughs> In three months you can. I can. I can do it. <laughs> do you have any funny stories? Um, it, it. I don't think it's a really funny, but but, but I um. Germans usually laugh about my way of saying no. Because, for example, I'm in a in, in a work situation, and and I I have worked with many companies that develop software, and then when I'm with a customer, they start asking for features that they want, and or they start to ask questions, and sometimes well they they want things that are very difficult to do, so. Um, when they start asking for too much or maybe going the wrong way or something, then I have to stop them somehow. So no, 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 no. <laughs> and I don't know why that's so funny because, and I say, the problem is I don't say nine, 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 nine. No, I said, because it's like the reaction and I cannot get rid of that. It, it doesn't matter how much German I do speak. It's like, no, no, no. And then they start to imitate me. No, 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 no. And then they laugh and then, well, that it's not a serious <laughs> meeting anymore, but. Um, <laughs> Yes, I. It's. Don't think. So how do you say it? The nine 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 nine. <laughs> I I it ha I have to think about it. It, it doesn't come automatically. No, I say no. No 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 no. Because that's the natural reaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I th I think here the people say, ne, ne 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 ne. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hmm. I have a history soon related to the work. Maybe I have a, no, have a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I, I have two. For example, I when when I wanted to start with the study here in Germany, uh, in Germany uh, the people have different ways to say the 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 hour, the clock, and. <laughs> And one once I I hear okay you have to come three part of four I don't know who is the the translator of that yeah three fourths in, in, in which area do you, uh, do you live in Bavarian oh. okay <coughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, things like that uh, yeah, yeah drei Viertel drei Viertel and the worst part is Viertel sieben yeah it's quarter quarter of the seventh hour mm. so it's quarter past six. Yes, and the problem was uh, I have to, I had to 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 make um, a, a monthly test for for the university, and and then the the, the professor came, and it was too late, and Herr Fischer, you uh, so spät, you are too late here. Yeah, but uh, he, uh, you say me in this time. No, no. Ah, excuse me. Uh, that was to be uh, on 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 the email, but uh, I was I was only called, and this was my first year here in Germany, and I didn't learn this this this, this kind of, of of the hour. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, this dreiviertel sieben and viertel sieben and uh, things alike, uh, m a lot of Germans have problems with that, and uh, this. Viertel sieben and drei Viertel sieben is only um, used in several areas, uh, like in uh, uh, Lower Saxony and I think in Bavaria, but especially here in this area, it's uh, mostly unknown. So, yeah. Um, it, what is the thing that you miss most uh, from your own uh, from from your old life? From Okay, I'm Latino, so I miss my family. I live here. Yeah, I live here with my wife and my daughter. She's eight years old, but I miss my mom and my brother very much. But they came to Germany every year this year. So that's the thing I miss uh, in Costa Rica. I was born in Colombia too, but I live in Costa Rica all my life. I miss the sea, what's the, the the beach. And mountains because I live in Dortmund. Dortmund is boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a pancake. Yeah. So I miss mountains. That's the thing I, I miss. And food, maybe. 
a little bit, but the food here is very nice. Um, my family, of course, because that's well, all my family is there. Um, but apart from that, I I do me well a few things. Um, coming from Colombia, not only from Colombia, I come from Cali, which is self self declared as the capital of salsa. So there's a lot of dancing, and um, here not only normal parties are maybe there's like a movement maybe maybe just for the very intrepid ones <laughs> uh, or you go to a salsa party and then the problem is that they everybody counts the steps and then it's like very specific figures that you have to do we don't dance like that and so the dancing at the parties or the impromptu parties that come out that's we always find an excuse to celebrate um so that and food in general but i think it's um well that's normal but then there's one thing that i miss very much is the we eat a lot of corn corn derivates corn bread corn uh, on the cob and and you don't get that here the ones that you get here if at all are the sweet corns nothing nothing to do like yeah, don't don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, for me it's the family too, the friends. But I think so. One thing I I miss I miss in here in Germany is, for example, with my German friends, I say, "Hey, do you have time next week?" Oh no, no, I'm sorry, uh, I I have a, a termin. No. And then and when do you have time? Yeah, maybe in three months. And then they, what? <laughs> what? Eh, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, this is, I think, what I'm missing okay. for, or maybe, yeah, yeah for you, it's yeah, the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for me, it's the Indonesian food. Um, <laughs> I, ha I live in Frankfurt, which is quite international, yeah. but there's not an Indonesian restaurant or something. I don't miss the Dutch food. <laughs> <laughs> Strobe waffles, uh, okay. Okay, I get some tomorrow if. Uh, uh, ooh. Name, name. Bayou? Warum Bayou? Um, on that topic of the termine. So you, you have to make appointments very uh, very far in advance that was already an, ad an adjustment for me but not only that it is very impressive for us that um, we make an, uh, a, uh, an appointment for in maybe two months two and a half months and everybody writes it in the calendar and then two and a half months even if we're not if we haven't talked to each other everybody shows up yeah. and everybody's there when we said that we were gonna be there right. It is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not normal. It's American. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it's like, what? <laughs> if in Colombia, sometimes uh, you do have to make things far in advance. But if it's so far away, then a, a week before, let us call. Let us call and make sure that they still remember. And you have to, and if he hasn't called, he forgot, it's not going to happen. He hasn't called, it's not going to happen. And, er, and then they don't show up because you didn't confirm it's it's uh, it was yeah and then um on the on the planning thing um there is small things for example um when i was in the university of applied sciences um we friday for example and we wanted to do a, a little get together with uh, friends so you go to the supermarket and you want to buy cola or something well, beer is another subject, but if you want to buy cola, for many people, then you buy, well, one liter bottles or anything. But then you want them for now. Like, it's six o'clock, we're meeting friends at, at seven, then uh, we want them cold. You cannot get one liter, one liter bottles cold. It's very Special difficult. Uh, you see? It's very difficult. In Colombia... Everything is cold. Everything is cold, and we don't only have one liters, and but two liters, three liter Coca Cola, and it's cold at all times. Anytime you can get because, and this is the thing, we improvise a lot. It's like last minute in Germany, if you're planning a party that size, 
how on earth are you gonna improvise the drinks? <laughs> of course you bought them a week in advance and you put them cold because I mean, it, it, no. <laughs> uh, last minute things, uh, it, it doesn't, and then small things like that, it's yeah. where they show, it shows how good at planning they are. <laughs> Let's open the, qu uh, the, the, the questions. Uh, what is your question? So my question would be, um, the WordPress community has a code of conduct and um, ethical rules. Um, did it happen to you in, um, yeah, since you're here that you get any racism or problems with like, I don't know, you know what I mean, like, um, okay. I haven't experienced any problems. I never experienced that. The, the people was always very open for me, and and on on the beginning, I, uh, as I, yeah, as I s spoke German not to uh, not to good not good, then the people was so slow and yeah, sometimes different. But uh, I didn't I didn't have problem in this. No, um, racism or, or discrimination, I didn't feel anything. And if anything, um, they were nicer or, or, or even like more interested because I'm like weird. Uh, also, because I, I studied in Emden, which is very north in, in, in Germany and not a very big metropolis. So there's not, it's not very international. So it was special. Um, I come from Colombia, so when they were f a little bit into the conversation or they got me to know a little bit, then they did ask about drugs or, well, the bad part of Colombia, but they were careful to wait until, yeah, that's how I filter people. Like, who? what do you ask first? <laughs> about the coffee and Pibe Valderrama or Pablo Escobar? So that, but they were careful to wait until yeah. No, never. The c uh, Germans have a very outside Germany, of course, the uh, people have a very stupid uh, stereotype about Germans. You're right. Uh, when I was going to come here, th no, they're a racist. I, I told them, I think you're like 70 years late or something because, yeah, there's no racism, racism, racism here that I've noticed for me. It was uh, every time I see I'm from Costa Rica, Everyone is wow, nice, wow, how is Costa Rica? Very nice. So j just to sum it up, uh, you didn't experience any racism or, uh, or bad, uh, the, uh, in, um, bad things, even when either inside the WordPress community and in, uh, in your uh, normal day life. So any other questions from the audience? So first of all, thank you very much for being here and for talking to us. It's very interesting. Uh, what is your tip? What can I learn as a German from you? What can you give us as a, I'll loosen up a little bit like, so I learned we need to cool down our drinks. To <laughs> <laughs> so I could invite you to a party in three years. But uh, so wha wha what is your other take on, on us that we cannot see as we are here all the time? Let me think, let me think, because um, <laughs> um, I would maybe suggest, I don't know how to, how to uh, make a lot of Germans see that, but um, I hear a lot of complaints from Germans about German procedures, or for example, the bureaucracy. And oh, the bureaucracy. There's a procedure for everything. There's a there's a form for everything, and and it's like I complained because it's complicated. Because. Yeah, but then um, as an as a as a foreigner, there's a lot of paperwork that I have to do. And I'm not only a foreigner, but I'm a foreigner from a country that, well, up until recently, it was very difficult to get visas anywhere because Colombia. Well, it's been a little bit easier now, but still, I am used to the paperwork. I'm used to 
filling up forms. And it was actually very easy here because for everything, there is a procedure. So if I wanted to do something, I just Google it uh, or ask, and then there's sp a specific, you have to do these 12 steps. But then I know what are the 12 steps. In, in Colombia, some of sometimes, not always, but sometimes it's like, uh, okay, what do you have to do? Oh, you have just to fill out this form. And then you fill it out, you go, and it, oh, but you forgot this other thing. Oh, but then you have to go to the other place and the other side of the city, and then, and then you, you figure out the 12 steps as you go. But then not in advance. Here, it's very clear, and then you go, and if you have done everything, da, 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 oh, okay, okay. So wait three weeks, and ah, oh, three weeks, I have to wait. But then three weeks exactly, I get the result. So um, I would encourage you to appreciate that <laughs> 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 because it's not forgiven. <laughs> and even even inside Europe, I don't know if, uh, probably the Netherlands is similar, but um, I had to travel a lot between France and Germany and the trains. In any Deutsche Bahn train station, you have the yellow printed out papers where you say, this train will arrive at this time on this platform. It's, all, it's printed out. It's known in advance. <laughs> Only in France, it's the neighbor. You go there, and you don't know what platform is going to be until like 10 minutes before. So there's everybody, there's like 100 people waiting for the for the in front of the screen to see where I hate that. And I, I'm, I, <laughs> I come from a country where there's not even a timeline. We do not know <laughs> when the bus is going to come. Someday we, come. we have time and you know, the bus goes here. When? We go, it will come. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, yeah, it will come. And then it comes one and maybe two minutes later, the other one comes and then maybe in 20 minutes, nothing comes. So you don't know, but uh, it will come doesn't matter so so a little bit of uh, uh, appreciation for how good the order is I would say I, I, I have a complaint with Germans yeah oh. <laughs> I'm trying to learn Deutsch right so I go to a person <coughs> hello we kids yeah I'm fine <laughs> mm, <laughs> why is the toilet oh the, to the, the bathroom is there <laughs> Everybody speaks English. I want to, right? <laughs> I, want, I, I want to learn German. <laughs> and they always fuck. That's why we have the piggy bank. Yes. <laughs> That's a good idea, yeah. So if somebody tries to speak German, speak German. <laughs> um, I, have a, I have a question. Uh, I realize that um, I'm pretty good uh, in English and I have a basic understanding of French and a basic understanding of uh, Dutch. And um, when I went to Sofia and uh, to, to Poland, um, I couldn't read anything because they, uh, they have uh, the Cyrillic uh, writing. So I really was lost. Uh, you had a any experience like that or uh, was that uh, fine for you? Um, every okay. You have I think we don't. I don't have problem with the with the um, pronunciation of German. But I think my my problem is sometimes in German you have uh, different vocals. You have ö, ä, und ö, und und this uh, und that, this we don't have that. And for e yeah, and for example, you can so switch the the vocal and you say another word, complete another. For example. Um, Morgen, morgen sind Karotten. Um, aber morgen, ne, morgen sind Karotten. Um, morgen, morgen is, yeah. To be, uh, sorry for the, uh, yeah, yeah, but for example, yeah. Yeah, but if uh, this is sometimes I, I, I switch the this, this word and then, yeah. Uh, the, the, there is this uh, the game in Germany uh, called Teekesselchen. If you have one and the same words uh, with an, uh, with a, uh, uh, with uh, totally different meanings, uh, that's even worse. Um, and th the other thing that is probably uh, uh, very unusual for uh, for anyone uh, outside Germany, we can we can concatenate words like hell, 
I think the longest word that's officially in the Duden is Rhein-Main-Donau-Kanal-Schifffahrtspatent. Wow. <laughs> that's I like that. I also like that. And that's just the longest official word we can concatenate. Uh, I think that's totally unusual for, uh, for you guys, right? Yeah, I like that. I like the big words, yes. <laughs> so yes. It's it's a a words, yeah, it's amazing. Like <laughs> when when you came, is well, you're like, what does? Then you start learning. Okay, this this. Okay, cool. Any further question from the audience? Uh, I come to you. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, just one quick thing because <laughs> he made me remember this. Okay, when I arrived in Italy for the first time. It was so crazy, it was so crazy, it was, uh, the thing is I arrived in a place a bit ancient then, so it was more of the old people who are not really used to black. So I <laughs> want to know that, it happened that I arrived at, the, I was trying to get to the train station, so I went to the window and I was like, uh, sorry, uh, train station, station, I, okay, yeah, it was station, I knew it was station, no, the, uh, station, and they say, avanti, avanti, avanti is forward. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, I say, grazie, I keep walking 15 minutes, I say, but uh, station, they say, avanti, avanti. Uh, yeah. Okay, fine. That wasn't quite hard to understand because the Italian, if you speak English, it, uh, Italian is not really difficult because it's just little letters out. But German, Dutch, how did you ever, ever? Because the first time I was in Germany in 2014 at the train station, my, all I knew my cousin who came to pick was saying was that uh, I saw letters and I was seeing the combination of two, three consonants like Z, top. How did you ever start? <laughs> because uh, till date, I still don't understand. Um, it was not easy. I came here, I could say good morning, thank you, and wo kann ich Brot kaufen? Which means, uh, like, okay. I could survive. But I didn't know anything else. And I studied in English, had a few German classes, but it was not until I actually started working uh, in a German project with Germans all around me that I was finally able to start uh, talking. It was like on the end of my second year that I kind of felt I could speak German. It's difficult. And I still make a lot of mistakes. Um, and and the the grammar and the daddy does yeah, yeah. Um, i don't know i i because well learn uh, course courses and and then what you're doing try to speak only in german in the area i think but um you know it was not particularly easy i don't know <laughs> Especially with Daddy Das, uh, I know some uh, cultural groups uh, from uh, fr from uh, Asia. They uh, uh, from the nearer part of Asia. They s uh, say the the auto, the boat. <laughs> um, but but uh, but uh, coming f uh, with with that story, I just recently read um, a, sat a satiric article um, about uh, Germans ordering döner, and. Um, and it's true. I I uh, I, th uh, I know I do it myself. If you go to uh, to uh, to a döner and uh, order a döner, you say mit allem und scharf. Did you ever realize uh, that Germans um, um, by design uh, talked wrong German because you uh, they knew that uh, you are not uh, uh, not very good in German? Is it I noticed it only, I didn't know. I realized afterwards, because I didn't know it was wrong German, because for me it was German. But uh, my husband sometimes does it on purpose so that I don't lose my accent or my mistakes. So so he, he, he has, her ger I, his German has gotten bad because of me. <laughs> <laughs> Um you're willing to tell us? I don't I don't remember but uh, but uh, cuz I don't know that they're mistakes. <laughs> so 
No, I, I don't I don't know. Do you, do you have any uh, examples of So, have we any further question from the audience? Anyone who wants to, uh, to ask a question? So, if we don't have any other question, or an I, I just want to teach you something. Uh, if you ever go to Costa Rica, you just need two words. Nothing else. <coughs> it's pura vida. You can search pura vida. So, pura vida means yes, it's okay, no. Bye, hello, good morning, <laughs> good night. So, yeah. That's hey, how are you? Pura vida. Okay, hello. Does it also mean beer? Uh, no, yeah. We, we say pura birra. Is pura birra. <laughs> 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 so, just take, keep in mind, pura vida and you'll be fine. I think this is a, a great uh, closing remarks for this yeah. session. Uh, I want to thank everyone here in this room uh, for, uh, for having this uh, session with us. By the way, I am the one to blame uh, for uh, th that these great people uh, shared uh, their thoughts uh, yesterday at the warm-up. I said, hey, Jacobo, you need to do a session and uh, uh, Maria too. And then we, uh, we got uh, both of them uh, today too. So uh, thank you for being here and uh, have a great evening. <laughs>